good morning so today i will be taking up a new topic that is the combined footing i think in the starting class i have told you people so when you people will be considering a combined footing and what is combined footing and all okay so i think i have already explained you people so let me consider a 30 40 site okay let me consider a 30 feet by 40 feet site okay so as you people know that we need to provide the columns at suitable positions okay so i need to provide the columns at suitable position based on the design let me assume that i have provided the columns over here okay so now let me think that from aesthetical point of view or due to some planning okay i need to provide the column very close to another column I need to provide the column close to another column. Okay. So now this is the column. Whenever I see it from the plan, these two are the cross section of the column. Okay. Then you people know that. So the footing will be extended in this manner. Okay. So don't you think that? So for this column also, there will be one more footing. So now. So you people able to see that the two footings of the columns are overlapping with each other. The two footings of the columns are overlapping with each other. So I can't do like that. So whenever this case arises, instead of going with the individual footing, so I need to go with the combined footing. So remember, so I need to go with the combined footing. When the footing of the two columns are overlapping with each other, okay, instead of normal isolated footing, I will be going with the combined footing, okay. So, in combined footing, there are two types one is the beam and slab type combined footing, and the one more is the slab type combined footing, okay. In this particular uh, session, I will be taking up the beam and slab type combined footing, okay. If you know beam and slab type, so you can easily do the slab type combined footing. Okay. So I have written the diagram of a beam and slab type combined footing. Observe here. So the cross section will be like this. Okay. So the overall view of a combined footing will be like this. So observe here. So there will be a slab resting on the ground. Okay. So where the beam is monolithically casted with the slab where the beam is monolithically casted with the slab okay this is the beam portion where the reinforcement of the beam will be projected till the slab okay this is the slab portion this is the beam portion okay now on the beam on the beam the two columns will be erected as usual same thing the column reinforcement will be taken inside the beam till the slab Okay, so now remember whenever the two columns or the footings of the two columns are overlapping with each other instead of normal footing, I will be going with the combined footing. Okay, so this is the typical diagram of a beam and slab type combined footing. If you know how to do the beam and slab type, slab type combined footing design, so you can easily do the slab type combined footing design. So that's why I will be taking a beam and slab type combined footing. So just concentrate on this diagram. This portion is the beam which is monolithically casted with the slab. So above the beam, the two columns will be erected where the reinforcement is taken till the bottom. Okay. So this is the typical diagram. So now directly I will be taking up a design problem. Directly I will be taking up a design problem. Okay. I will be rubbing this. So to explain the design of combined footing. So this is the question that I have taken. So it's a design example. Design a rectangular slab and beam type combined footing for two columns spaced at four meter center to center. Okay, the distance between the two column is 4 meters center to center. 
the first column is 300 mm into 300 mm it's a square column and carries 800 kilo newton load okay so it is carrying a point load of 800 kilo newton the second column is 400 mm into 400 mm and carries 1200 kilo newton okay the width of the footing is restricted to 1.8 meter so as you people know that the footing it will be rectangular in shape so length into breadth okay they have given the breadth they have given the breadth length we need to calculate but in many of the questions they will not be giving the breadth okay so you can assume it so i will be telling that a little bit later but in this particular question they have given the width of the footing is restricted to 1.8 meter okay use sbc of the soil as 180 kilo newton per meter square full stop use m25 grade concrete and fe415 grade steel so this is the question so now how to deal with this please remember just by reading the question itself i came to know that it's a rectangular slab and beam type combined footing okay so in some of the questions they ask only design rectangular slab type combined footing if you know beam and slab type you will neglect the beam and you will be proceeding with only the slab design so that also i will be doing it so now i will be taking up this particular design So now, okay, so they are asking us for the footing design. As the name itself indicates, it is a combined footing. So combined footing. So footing means we require a mat. Okay, reinforcement mat is required. So as the name itself indicates, slab and beam type. So at the bottom, we are having a slab. So slab means, so we will be going with the spacing of the bars. If I want to know the spacing of the bars, I need to know what is the area of steel. If I want to calculate the area of steel, how much steel you people will be providing? So how much it bends? That much steel I will be providing. How much it bends? So how much you load apply on it? How much you apply the load? So that much it bends. So where the load depends on? It depends on the dimension and the external agencies. So that's why, so now we'll concentrate on the loading and the dimension. So first I will be going with the dimensions. So now I will be taking up the dimension of the footing or else I will be first writing the data that they have given. So what are all the data that they have given? I will be writing it. So there are two columns. So first column. size is 300 mm into 300 mm so what is the load that it carries it's 800 kilo newton so there is one more column that is the second one so the size of the second column is 400 mm into 400 mm into 400 mm the load that it can carry is 1200 kilo newton okay so what else they have given they have given the sbc of the soil they have given sbc of the soil as 180 kilo newton per meter square okay so they have told us to use m25 grade concrete And they have told uh, FE415 grade steel. FE415 grade steel. Okay. So these are all the data that they have given. So as I told you people, I want the spacing. If I want to know the spacing, it's the area of steel. How much area of steel you need to provide? So how much bending moment? How much it bends? That much area of steel I will be providing. How much it bends? How much load you are applying? How much load is coming? It depends on the dimension and the external agencies. So I will be now concentrating on the dimensions. Now I will be concentrating on the dimensions. So the second one is dimensions of footing 
dimensions of footing. So observe here. So while designing the combined footing, okay, I will not be concentrating on the reinforcement of the columns. So I am not concentrating on the reinforcement of the column. I will be concentrating only on the footing portion. That is the beam portion as well as the slab portion. Okay. So now I want to know the dimension of the footing. So first I will be concentrating on the slab portion. So if I want to know the dimension, so don't you think that it's a rectangular shape? The slab will be in the rectangular shape. Okay. So I want the breadth, I want the length, I want the depth of the footing. Okay. So for that, if I want to know what are all the dimensions, so I think you people know how the load get transferred in a building. So from the slab, it will get transferred to the beam. From the beam, it get transferred to the column. From the column, it get transferred to the footing. From the footing to the surrounding soil. So what is the load that is coming from the column? So that will be transferred to the footing. So I need to know what is the load that is coming from the column. So it has been given. So total load. So total load is equal to load from column A plus load from column B. Okay. So what is the load that is coming from column A and column B? So the first load that is coming is 800 kilo Newton from column A. From the second column, it is 1200. So total it is 2000 kilo Newton. So what is the load that is coming from the column? So it is 2000 kilo Newton. So next I need to take the self weight of the column. I need to take the self weight of the column. Okay. So how to take that? Usually how to calculate the self weight of the column? I think you people know that. So weight is nothing but equal to density into volume. Yes or no? Density into volume. Density of concrete is 25 kilo Newton per meter cube. Yes or no? Into volume. So it is nothing but breadth into depth into length. Breadth into depth into length. But I am taking the self weight of the column. I know what is the breadth and what is the depth of the column. But I don't know what is the height of the column. So I can't directly take that particular formula. Okay, so for time being what I will be doing, let me assume the self weight of column, okay, self weight of column as 10% of column load, 10% of column load. So will you people accept that 10% of 2000, how much it is? 200 kilo Newton. So what is the total load that is coming on footing? So what is the total load that is coming on footing? So it's 2000 plus 200. It's 2200 kilo Newton. So the total load that is coming on the footing is 2200 kilo Newton. So now we'll go with the formula. I think you people know stress is equal to load by area stress is equal to load by area observe here so stress is equal to load by area done so now i want the area what i am calculating dimensions of the footing area means what it's a rectangular section length into breadth so area a is equal to load by stress. Yes or no? So now, area is equal to load by stress using this particular formula. Okay, where S is stress, which is nothing but the SBC of the soil. Okay, SBC of the soil. So area is length into breadth is equal to what is the load, total load that is coming? So it's 2200 kilo Newton okay so divided by SBC so what is the SBC it's 180 kilo Newton 
per meter square. And one more thing, in the question itself they have given the width of the footing is restricted to 1.8 meter. The width of the footing is restricted to 1.8 meter. I know the breadth. So by solving the entire thing, so you people will get the value of L. I will be directly taking it from the book. So it's 6.79 meter. It's 6.79 meter. But I can't keep it like this. So approximately, let me take it as 7 meter. Okay. So now, what is the dimension of the footing? The breadth and length. So breadth is 1.8 meter and the length is 7 meter. So I got the dimension. So L into B is equal to length is 7 meter into breadth is 1.8 meter. You can't go beyond this because in the question itself they have given the breadth is restricted to 1.8 meter. So I got this length into breadth. Still I am in need of the depth calculation that I will be taking up a little bit later. Okay, so just imagine the 3D view of a combined footing that I have, I mean that I have shown you in the starting of the class. Okay, so if you see it from the top, if you see it from the top, don't you think that, observe. So when you see the combined footing from the top, I will be writing it over here. I will be writing the small diagram so that it will help you. Just observe. If you see it from the top, here the columns will be. If you see it from the top, I am seeing it from the top. Don't you think that this portion appears like it has merged with this slab? So this portion I am writing it. Okay. So this is the uh, footing portion. That is the slab portion. So this beam portion appears to be merged. Okay. You are seeing it from the top and you will be able to see two columns. Yes or no? Okay. So now, in the question also, they have given the first column is 300 by 300 and the second column is 400 by 400 mm. Right? So now, the thing is, at what position I need to place? I know this particular value. Just now, I have calculated it. So what is the value of L? So L is 7 meter. What is the breadth? So the breadth is 1.8 meter. Yes or no? So now the question is at what distance from the corner? Okay, so I need to place this columns. Both the columns from the corner at what distance? And they have only given that. So the two columns are spaced at a distance of 4 meter center to center. Spaced at a distance of 4 meter center to center. So now I need to calculate the projections. I will be using the word projections. So what projection? From the corner, I need to place this columns. In this direction, no problem. Because if I consider the 1.8 center, I will be taking it. So what will be this particular distance? I need to design it because this is nothing but the width of the uh, beam. This is nothing but the width of the beam. So all those things, I will be doing it in the next class. Okay, so thank you. I will be winding up.